This week on What's Up. Nadal Sheba Ramadan Sports Tournament awards 8 million dirhams in prizes. Ramadan Health Majlis offers free health checks to the public. High consumption of junk food and added sugars may lead to depression. And on Celebrity Fit, meet Tom and Marcus, two Dubai expats who successfully completed the toughest foot race on earth, the Marathon de Sable. I'm Rachel Pether, welcome to What's Up. The third Nad Al Sheba Ramadan Sports Tournament successfully concluded this July, giving away a total prize money of 8 million dirhams to the winners. The tournament hosted an array of sports competitions, such as paddle tennis, archery, cycling, volleyball, and running, to name but a few held over the holy month of Ramadan. More than 4,000 athletes took part in this exciting event, held under the patronage of Dubai Crown Prince and Chairman of Dubai Sports Council, His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. We have so many, so many new things and this year we have um, an, a new area called an FMB area. We have lots of gifts as well, lots of tickets. We have so many things for the kids. We have so many things for everyone who want to join us and come. So the objective of this tournament is to keep people playing sports all the time. The sport is very good and I'm also asking people to play sports. Aside from providing entertainment, the tournament also hoped to inspire the spectators to take part in sports and live a healthier lifestyle. Those who attended the event as spectators also had the chance to win amazing raffle prizes such as one of 11 luxury cars, the latest gadgets, and airline tickets to international destinations. A Ramadan Health Majlis was put up in Dubai to provide free healthcare services to the public. Located at the front of the Medior 24-7 Hospital in Burr, Dubai, the Majlis was operational from the 19th of June until the end of Ramadan, from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. The tent was fully equipped with all amenities to enable visitors to have free consultations with a general practitioner, specialists, dietitians, and physiotherapists. These doctors were on hand to answer any queries and concerns a person may have about their health. Counters were also available for people to do primary checkups, including blood pressure, blood sugar levels, and BMI tests. Anybody can walk into the majlis any time from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. So when they come in, they can register here and then they can get their blood uh, glucose as well as their BP checked. After that, they can consult a general practitioner. There's a dietitian and a physiotherapist in the majlis all the time. They will examine you and if they think they need a specialist consultation, they'll be referred back to the hospital and there are uh, there is 50% off for the consultation and the laboratory investigations which is being done in the hospital. A new study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition has found a link between high consumption of junk food and depression. According to the World Health Organization, one of the biggest burdens on society is depression. This prompted a team of researchers 
to study if what we eat contributes to this modern disease. The team looked at data from food questionnaires and a scale that measured symptoms of depressive disorders of 70,000 women. The researchers found that those with diets higher on the glycemic index, including those rich in refined grains and added sugar, were strongly associated with greater odds of depression. Some aspects of the diet which had protective effects against developing depression included fiber, whole grains, whole fruits, vegetables and lactose. Though the authors couldn't pinpoint a mechanism from the study, they noted that one possibility is that the overconsumption of sugars and refined starches is a risk factor for inflammation and cardiovascular disease, both of which have been linked to the development of depression. And when we come back, We'll meet Tom and Marcus, two Dubai expats who successfully completed the toughest foot race on earth, the Marathon de Sable. Welcome back to What's Up. The Marathon de Sable, or Marathon of the Sands, takes place every year in southern Morocco in the Sahara Desert. It's a gruelling six-day marathon covering 251 kilometres, or equivalent to six marathons. Considered to be the toughest foot race on the planet, this ultra-marathon proves to be a test of endurance and determination to every athlete who enters. This year, two Dubai expats faced the challenge and successfully completed the race. Let's meet Marcus Smith and Tom Otten for this week's Celebrity Fit. My name is Tom Otten. Uh, I run a digital agency in Dubai uh, focusing on uh, social media management websites. I've been here for nine years. I'm originally from UK. I studied in uh, South Africa and I spent most of my time in the Middle East uh, before coming to Dubai. Uh, Sports-wise, I've, I've, rugby's been my passion for most of my life. Uh, when I finished playing rugby, I got into distance running and uh, hence why I ended up doing the Marathon de Sable. My name's Marcus Smith. I'm originally from the UK. I've been in Dubai for a number of years. Uh, I've been in sport my whole life. I used to play professional rugby down in Australia and I moved back to Dubai in 2004 and in 2008 set up my own company, In A Fight, which is an international fitness performance company based here in Dubai, where we help to make people's lives better through physical training and physical instruction. I do all different sports, and over the last couple of years, I've done a lot more running to try and challenge myself a little bit more and just get a little bit more uncomfortable. I started out through rugby actually. Uh, we used to play against each other for many years. I was part of the Dubai Dragons and Marcus was, uh, was captain in the Dubai Exiles at the time. So we used to play against each other, that's how we got to know each other. And then from there we both ended up playing um, international sevens. Uh, so we met on the, uh, met on the rugby field and, and became friends from there because I think we both had an affinity for pushing ourselves to the limits and, and sort of we, uh, yeah, we became, became friends from that. Someone said to me in 2010, uh, when I was running a marathon, they said there's only really one marathon to run, and that's Marathon de Sable. And I had a look at it and I was like, well, that's not one marathon, it's five marathons or six marathons. And I, that, that sort of interested me a little bit. And so since, since that time, I was always looking at Marathon de Sable and thinking about running in the desert. And Two years ago, I, I signed up for it, and then luckily, I managed to rope Tom into into running his first marathon. And then, when we'd finished, when he'd finished that, I told him that we had a longer marathon to run, and asked him to come and run in the Sahara, and he said yes. We're very fortunate to live in the UAE, where we do have a fairly similar environment in terms of it. it's hot. Uh, it's yeah, terribly hot sometimes out in the desert and it can get quite humid as well. So 
you know, we had the sand out there to go and run through. Uh, it's a, it was a great opportunity to, to get out into similar sort of environments, which a lot of the guys coming from Europe don't get the opportunity to do that. Some of the guys that we met along the way, they were you know, running through snow drifts before they, uh, before they came out to the uh, Sahara Desert for the MDS. So we had the opportunity to go out into the desert here and we recreated um, a few of the sort of similar scenarios. So a few times we went out, we did a, a, a decent run, we slept rough overnight, uh, we got up the next morning and we did, we did the same thing again. So it was, uh, yeah, we had the opportunity to do that, so we, we recreated it as much as we could. It's been the greatest physical challenge that I've done personally uh, to date. Um, there's other things that have been sort of pretty difficult, um, but this, in terms of the duration, the waking up and going again, um, the sort of uh, mental approach to, to something of, of this sort of size, it's, it's certainly the, the, the largest thing that I've done personally. It's a, there's no doubt it's a, it's a super tough race. You're in the desert for a long time. We're there for eight days with no washing facilities, limited clothes, not the greatest food. It's a really tough race. Is it, is it like the, one of the hardest things? And I don't know, I did a race a couple of years ago that I didn't sleep for close to 65 hours. So that, that, was, that was quite tough. We were running for 40 hours. I think it's very difficult. And I think sometimes in the endurance world, Everyone's like, that's the hardest or that's the hardest. Every race has its own conditions. Every race has its own challenges. And everyone starts out to complete their challenge and, and, and to do their race. And you know, in, it, it's very difficult to say whether one race is harder than the other. There's no doubt Marathon de Sable is a, is a hugely challenging race. Uh, physically, it's quite tough. Mentally, it's very tough because you're there for so long. So yeah, if, if people are thinking of getting involved, it's definitely something that's going to test you in a number of different ways. There's two different ways to look at it. A lot of people take a lot of very high sugar food. What we, what we chose to do is, is use fat as a, a source of energy. So we use a lot of fat, which we're able to get a lot of calories from, from relatively small amount of food. Although having said that, you still, you try to envisage what six days of food looks like. So we looked at a lot of dehydrated food, a lot of pre-packed food, and a lot of food that gave us really high energy levels and, and a lot of calories to as, as small and as dense as possible. So we, we were actually eating, we, we developed a product, uh, a dehydrated meat with the organic foods and cafe here in Dubai that we used every day for dinner. And then we just used a load of nuts and a load of nut butter to get through. And that was absolutely fine. The, the one issue that we found that we had is in, in the race, you're rationed with water. So you don't have a great deal of water, which was slightly challenging for us because obviously we're, a lot of the runners are about 50 to 60 kilos and they get the same amount of water that we got. And we're a lot heavier than that and we sometimes didn't have enough water. So that, that, was, that was a big challenge, but we managed to overcome it as well. It doesn't really test your friendship. Like I say, if you, if you know why you're there and why you're doing it, it's more about enjoying it and just helping each other in the times that are probably not so easy. When you're going to those sort of extreme environments with someone, the better you know them, uh, the, the easier that relationship's gonna be when, when you start to get tested. So I'd say not necessarily testing the, the friendship, but it's more getting to know each other uh, and how each other reacts under, under sort of extreme pressure. And then you come out of that and uh, yeah, you know the other person better and therefore the next event's gonna be a lot easier because we know how to deal with each other. It's the, the race is just a, it's, it's a short period, but there's a lot of preparation for that. You know, there's months and months of planning what you're gonna eat, what you're gonna carry, um, all the training that you're gonna do out in the desert. There's a lot that comes with it. So if you're gonna do all of that on your own, and it really is sort of a, at least a six month undertaking. Um, if you're gonna do that on your own, that's, that's a lot of time you're gonna spend on your own. And it's, for me personally, I'd rather spend that with someone that, that you know, we have a bit of fun with. So that, that's my point of view. Find someone that you get on with and find someone that you can have fun with and it really helps your morale and it'll help you to be successful in that challenge. Tom and I, luckily, as, as we said, we knew each other, we played rugby, we've known each other for the best part of 10 years and we are able just in every situation just to try and have as much fun as possible. For me, that kind of, that really helps a lot.
Here's what's happening on your favourite shows this week on Physique TV. Here's what we have in store for you this week on Physique TV. This week on Good Chef, Bad Chef, rice dishes will be in the spotlight as Adrian and Zoe explore different takes on how to cook this humble grain. Nutritionist Zoe is going Italian with a baked rice cake and she'll also cook a rice pilaf, which is classically a Middle Eastern dish. Adrian, on the other hand, seems to be going all the way across the globe with his Asian congee dish. I think the one thing, people get a little confused because we all think that rice is bad. That's not true. We need carbohydrates in our diet. It's really important. They're a brilliant energy source, but it's all about volume and understanding that you don't really need more than maybe half a cup to a cup even at the most of cooked rice. And there's so many great rices out there. You've got basmati, which is low GI, you've got wild rice. All rices are not created equal. So shop around, find the one that suits you best. You're right, the big pile of rice is, is not what you want, especially yeah. the fried rice with lots of pork in it and oil and those sorts of well, things. What's interesting, my sister-in-law, is um, she's Chinese Malaysian. And when we go over to her family's house, the banquets they do are amazing. I get so excited to go there, but rice is never the huge dish that we often have at, you know, the Chinese restaurants or the Thai restaurants. It's always just a small accompaniment. So, I'm going to give this a I love good... the onion and the leek in there. And just sweat that off for a little bit. Yep, so I'm just going to sweat that for a little while. And what I thought I'd also add, just to give this a little bit of difference in its flavour, which is sort of the Middle Eastern, I'd add some cinnamon in there as well. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah so lovely. something a little different. Um, to maybe what you would normally have in a rice dish. But again, it's a great flavour and just a great way to add a, you know, a little element of difference. Don't miss this episode to learn more about rice. What do Adam and Tim have in store for you on this week's episode of Cryptomaniacs? Let's catch them in their van while they are recording this episode. Welcome to Red Bull Cryptomaniacs. This is the show which keeps you perfectly in sync with the world's best free sports clips. That's my line. No, that's my line. Stop copying me. No, you stop copying me. Here's what's coming up on the show. Coming up, Nikolai Krasnicka takes the world of ice speedway by storm. Mike Widdick tries to claw back some much needed points in D1NZ. And young talent Brooke McDonald bursts onto the downhill scene. Quite interesting. Don't forget to tune in. MMA fans are in for a treat because all new episodes of MMA All Out are still on. Rio and Ali give their take on the recent fights that took place on one championship, Dynasty of Champions 2. The China event was filled with remarkable fights that you'll have to see again. Where are we going? We're in this series of fights that was declared the winner. But there are many fights that are coming up in this year. When we come back to Dubai, we'll be in the one championship. We'll be in Myanmar. We'll be in Manila. I think we'll be in Singapore. But we'll come back to Dubai in November. لو نرجع إلى دبي في نوفمبر راح تكون مباراة جميلة جدا لو يدخلوا جدنب اللي فاز باللقب في دبي نرجع يقاتل تيموفي اللي هو للقب للقب تكون مباراة جميلة راح أعتقد لو خلوها المين إيفنت المباراة الرئيسية في دبي في نوفمبر يكون شيء حلو مفروض تصير فيكتور كوي الرئيس التنفيذي إلى ون تشامبيون شيب ونقترح على اقتراح عليه خصوصا احنا في دبي متشوقين انه يكونوا مقاتلين يجون مقاتلين أقوياء ولكن اتمنى انه يكونوا يدخلوا مقاتلين عرب اكثر خصوصا بالمنطقه هاي في عندنا مقاتلين يعني مثل احنا دائما نتكلم عن محمد الوليد ومنير السنايبر علي مقداد اي واحد من عندهم ممكن ممكن ينزل بس رياض طاي رياض طاي خلص علق قفازات بس ولكن 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 حلو لو نجيب لو 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 نحاول نجيب لما نرجع على دبي نجيب مقاتلين عرب وتكون القمه تبعهم بين التمفي وجدنبا للقب تكون شيء حلو To know more about our schedule don't forget to visit the Physique TV website Again here are our top stories 
Nad Al Sheba Ramadan Sports Tournament awards 8 million dirhams in prizes. Ramadan Health Majlis offers free health checks to the public. And on Celebrity Fit, Dubai expats Tom and Marcus share their Sahara Marathon experience. Thanks for joining me today. If you have any comments or suggestions, connect with us on our social media pages. I'm Rachel Pether. See you next time.